and sin, he, 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 he is over the cosmos, it says. You go to Mars, it's a dead planet. You go to the moon, it's a dead planet. You go to the, the gas plants, you can't live there because it's 400 degrees. The, the life is here that God gives us. And, and there's so many things that us to make us want to believe that there's life else, elsewhere. If there is, that's God's business. That put us here. Yeah. Some people talk about the Bible, whether or not they believe it or not. I says, well, the Bible is not an archaeological book. It is not a historical book. It is the Word of God. It is a historical book. And, and if you study it and, and with, 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 with the idea that you believe in science, you can prove science with the Bible. Yes. You know, until some atheist wants to try to prove you different. Okay. So we're up to chapter 6, verse 12. Let's read that one. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, I think that's pretty straightforward. It is. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. And you know what? I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> Y'all ever see the movie, uh, uh, Old oh, oh, Brother, We're Out There? Yes. I like when they say, do not seek the treasure. <laughs> like, do not seek sin. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, I know, it, you know, it, mine says it pretty simple because, you know, it says do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give, it, give in to simple desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve uh, you were dead, uh, to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead. Right. Now, the word reign is basileo. Basileo means to be a king. Don't let sin be king over you. Amen. I mean, we, we have problems with sin. I, I'm not, I, I, can't, I, I can't say we don't. If you do, you're a liar. We all have problems with sin, temptation, but don't let it be king. Because once it's king, it rules over you. And where in your mortal body, the... the Thanetos, that's uh, T-H-N-E-T-O-S, T-O-S, T-H-N-E-T-O-S, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, but it says, subject and liable to die, your mortal, deathly body. The body is a soma. The soma means a dead body. And I thought that was interesting. Don't let, don't let sin reign in your dead body. Our bodies are dead, but we're alive in Christ. Okay. And it says, do, uh, do not obey this king of death. I wrote that. Obey Hupakuo. H-U-P-A-K-O-U-O. To listen, to hearken to, and to conform to. You know, sin starts as a little thing in your head. Yes, it does. Trying to get you to do something that you shouldn't do. And sometimes we, we sin on the spur of the moment, which is even worse. Well, I think it's worse if we actually think about it. It, we don't need to let it rule in our bodies. Do not let this king of death deceive you by your own lust. That word lust there is epithumia. Epithumia. Desiring, craving, longing, and to desire what is forbidden. Satan uses your body as a vehicle of death. And that's like anything else. It's more you feed it, the worse it's going to be. Right, exactly. He used your body as a vehicle of death. He's trying to kill you. What did he say? Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, kill and destroy. destroy. Well, Jesus came to give you life, and life more abundantly. And Paul, I love him, I love Paul because he tells us how, how we can make that happen in our lives. God's already done it. It's up to us now to believe it. You know, to walk in it, to listen, to hear it. Verse 13 said, do not yield your members. The word yield, there's haristeme, to, to, be, to be a hand, aid, assist, or provide. Do not give assistance to your members, the melos, the limbs, or body parts, as instruments of unrighteousness. Okay, you've got, you got to first note that Paul, he first addressed your mortal body, me, on the on a on a, on a as a person. And then he addresses our members. He's not talking about my hands or my feet or my eyes. He's talking about us as a body of Christ. Okay? 
don't don't let don't don't let your members be uh, if you see them going out of the way you don't smash them but you got to share the gospel with them it says but do it says yield yourselves unto God okay and as what as someone who has died and has risen from the dead and yield your members as instruments of righteousness that word righteousness is decay I o sune it means an act of justification and being right. You know, sometimes it's just good to be a good person. You know? Uh, it doesn't make you go to heaven. It doesn't None of this stuff makes you go to heaven. It makes you have life and life more abundantly on this earth. You know, we preach we preach Jesus crucified, but we preach Jesus risen from the dead. So he's alive and well. Okay, verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. It will stop right there. I like it, it says it says a definitive. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Right. No. Mine says it will no longer be your master. Yes. The word the word there, dominion over, is kureiu, which means to be lord of, to rule. And I like that because he says, sin shall not have dominion over you if you follow what I'm telling you. If you just believe in Jesus Christ, it won't have dominion over you. You'll rise up above it. Because you are not under the law. But we are ruled by grace. Grace is our king and sin is conquered. Oh, I like that. Yes. Grace is our king and sin is conquered. Verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, uh, not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. If, if grace is our king, is it okay to sin? Let me ask you that. Is it okay just because God is saved? No. 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 By no means, it says. By no means, God forbid. Bid. And uh, the uh, there's two words there for God forbid. I don't know why they 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 they. Uh, they translated in the King James, God forbid, which is really good, I guess, but that's not what it says in, in, in Greek. It says, it says, man, un, M-E, one word, O-U-N. No, not in the least, absolutely not. That's what it said. he says it twice there. Absolutely not. Verse 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves to servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Those are all questions. I like it's like when he says, don't you know? I like when I'm reading the Bible, I, I see that, I'm going, don't you know? Well, I, I, need, I, I, I must need to know something. <laughs> it says reckon, I need to reckon it. You know? It says, don't you know? The question, who or what do you yield or obey? That's a question to yourself. What? Who do I yield to? What do I yield to? And what do I obey? If you become a servant, a dolos, which means a slave, a slave to obeying its commands, I don't care what it is, if you yield to sin, what's the outcome? Death. 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 If you yield to obedience, what is the outcome? It says righteousness uh -huh. and justification. And obedience, the word obedience in Greek is hupakoe, H-U-P-O-K-O-E, and it means attentive hearkening. I think the problem with the church, I think sometimes we're too busy to listen to God. You know? Sometimes. No. And how do you pray? Do you listen to God or do you pray the whole time? Yeah. Do you talk to God or does he talk to you? I like talking to God. Boy, when he talks to me... <laughs> you know, there's something else, you know. That's why I write a lot of this stuff down, because he does talk to me. Verse 17. But thank be to God that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Charis, charis be to God. That's thank you. And who are we to thank? God, right? Mm -hmm. And what are we to thank Him for? 
I thank Him that we were. See that word? Were is past tense. Yep. We were. We're no longer slaves to sin. See, Satan wants to tell you that you are a slave to sin. Because we do sin. We could, we could, we could uh, focus on that, but we should focus on the free gift. I receive that gift of grace. That gift drives, drives me to be obedient to that form of doctrine. So the, form, the word form, there's two books. A stamp, a print, a pattern. We're obedient because this pattern has been set forth before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ. This doctrine. Didache. Teaching and instruction. That God has given me this obedience that springs from the very depths of my heart. My cardia. Which is the center of my being. Obeying from the heart. Cardia. Now what's so important about your heart? <laughs> I mean, what's so important about your heart? If it stops beating, uh, you got a major issue. You got a major issue if your heart starts beating, stops beating. Yeah. But why? It's the blood that runs through the body. Yep. Yes, and that blood brings life to every member. You know, every member. It's talking about the members, but I wanted to make this into a spiritual thing. The members are you. Yeah. The blood of Christ, when we share this gospel, it flows and gives you life. It gives this person life, that person life. And if everybody can grasp a hold of that and share that good news, that gospel, we'll see a change in this world. If we haven't already, it's just getting harder and harder, I think, to share the gospel, especially in the United States. You know, everybody thinks they know the word of God. And they're mm -hmm. not teaching. That's when it would... You just turn on any, almost any evangelist on TV and they will preach out of one scripture. Mm -hmm. One scripture and then they'll teach your whole message. And that's when it becomes dangerous to you too when you think you know it. Well, and also taking one scripture means you've left the rest of it out because it may not mean what... And they may not even take the whole scripture. They just take Part. one phrase. Right, right. In fact, Sister Norma said of the B side. The B side of the scripture. What happened to the A side of the scripture? Yeah. You know, uh -huh. I'm a person that believes that we need to study all. And uh, very important to study your Bible. And that's why I like these outlines because you can go methodically and study your Bible four or five scriptures a day or more, ten if you like. It takes time to do it. You know, if you want to study Greek and stuff like that. Uh, lots of good tools out there to use nowadays. It's gonna say, you know, nowadays we've got our phones. We just speak into it. And the Greek pops up. Mm -hmm. Back when I was younger, I used to have carry around big Strong's concordance in a big book, you know, and have to flip through it. So there's some good ways to study your Bible. I want to encourage y'all, and I'm going to go ahead and end early because of this uh, is one to So next week, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. But it's a good stopping place uh, because uh, the, my last my last comment was. Uh, uh, disobedience springs forth from the very depths of my heart, my cardia, the center of my being. This doctrine God gives us to, to walk in. We'll, we'll, we'll start up next week on verse 18, uh, being made free from sin. And like I say, chapters 6, 7, and 8 are my favorite chapters in the book of Romans. And we've already done 1 through 3, which uh, 1 through 5, which really told us we were all sinners and uh, <laughs> arguing with Jewish people. <laughs> yeah. you know, it just tell, it tells us who we are and it tells us how to straighten ourselves out too so that's the one thing God always gives us hope so God bless y'all